Let me show you the new way front end development is being done with AI. This video right here is going to allow you to take any element on any website and get the code for it. Any element, Corbin, any element. We could take Apple's website, Macy's website. We could take all the UI elements from X as well. Therefore, by the end of this video, you'll know how to leverage AI, front end, and code. Sound good? Let's jump in. Today's tutorial could not have been done like two years ago. It would have been impossible. That's why I'm making it because basically there is no videos on this topic on the interwebs. If there is, put it down in the description down below. I guarantee you there isn't. I'm gonna show you how to do it in basically as fast as possible, this new strategy. So I have my React-based app here. This is gonna work with any type of tech stack though. So whatever language you typically code in, the strategy I'm about to show you will work. To be clear though, if you're just like, Corbin, how the heck did you just get to this step? It feels like you skipped some. Since the purpose of today's tutorial is to show you the strategy and not how to just build out a React app, I'm gonna leave in the description how to build out a React app with Cursor AI, also with Windsurf. Obviously, you can also set up a VS Code as well. But like the big one here that if you really want a full-blown three-hour and 11-minute video showing you how to do front-end development in this new age, check out that video right there, three-hour and 11 minutes. This shows you strategies that were only possible in the last year and a half too, realistically a year. Therefore, every single piece of coding content when it comes to front-end development pre-2022 is not as relevant as it used to be. Obviously, it's relevant in the sense of maybe like fundamental stuff and structuring, but not in the way we approach it. So let's approach it. So here is step one to the strategy. Find something you like. So for example, I am on Stripe's webpage here. You know, I'm scrolling through. This looks cool. That looks cool. I find myself here and I'm like, you know what? I really like this section. I want to take this for my own website or software. Therefore, all we need to do is this. Screenshot that specific section. So for me, I'll just grab this, Command Shift 4 on Mac, screenshot. Step one is done. So now that I have that and I have that screenshot, obviously let's come back over here to our React app here. In theory, I should make a separate file that's just for this component. So let's actually go ahead and do that. It's not perfect structuring, I know. I'm just trying to show you this strategy. I'm gonna go ahead and call this like carousel.js and then we'll do carousel.css. Whatever language you use, obviously go with your type of formatting. With that done, let's jump over to ChatGPT. Actually, one thing before we jump over to ChatGPT, notice the UI element I'm taking. There is photos associated with each one of these little tabs. Therefore, tip number one when doing the strategy is have a placeholder image that we can just reference and then fill in with the correct image later on. So I'll just create a new folder here real quick, just called like images. And then let me drag an image here. We're gonna do a pancake image, blind because I like pancakes. Not as good as a corned beef hash though. Americano, coffee, no cream, no sugar. So that image in there, and we can go ahead and make sure we use the right way of importing that image from the directory. Let's jump over to ChatGPT. This strategy works with either 4.0 or 0.1. Why? Because we have the ability to actually attach a file here. Does this strategy work with other AI models, e.g. Claude, e.g. Gemini? Well, yes, I guess. If you like those models better, proceed. Personally, I just like ChatGPT. Why? Because I like ChatGPT. Okay. From here, I'll go to show you the strategy of 4.0 because that's more accessible to a lot of users. Attach that image, that, that screenshot of the Stripe UI. With that image attached here, here's what we're gonna do. If you don't have custom instructions set up in your ChatGPT, I would suggest you do that so you get better answers and outputs. I'll leave a video right there in the description down below. What you put in custom instructions is stuff like, we're creating a React-based app. We use JS, CSS, our backend is Python-based. We use Firebase to connect integrations, like stuff like this. For now though, that doesn't matter. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna say, we like this element. We want to add it to our app.js. Give me the code for this, but we want it in the file of carousel.js, carousel.css. Then we'll provide the relevant code for wherever we're gonna import this. So for example, app.js code, provided that code. Then coming down here, we're gonna say, I'll put the entire code for carousel and use this as the placeholder image wherever needed. And then provided that little pancake image. Remember, we're doing that so that it can use it as a placeholder for this, this, and this. Hit enter. Here's the second tip when it comes to this. Sometimes when talking to ChatGPT in the context of this strategy, it'll output little snippets of code relevant to the UI you provide. This can be annoying. So if do not do this, ask for it to do the entire file. We don't want a lazy ChatGPT. I found better results using the O1 model and just basically getting it right on the dot, right on the first input. With the 4.0, you're gonna have to play around a little bit in the sense of structuring and making it look perfect. For now though, Let's proceed. We're gonna copy the JS code here. Come over to carousel.js, paste. 
And to make sure we can even see this React project, let's go ahead and run it. So we're going to come over here to Terminal. As I stated before, make sure to watch that three-hour video, three hours of free content. If you really want an in-depth tutorial on all of this, even going to as far as showing you how to push it to a live website link that you can access, newsletter, CTAs, everything like that. NPM start. Let's get the local host 3000 going here. Coming back over here, let's go to CSS, copy code. Go ahead and paste it. And then finally, let's go ahead and paste over the JS so we actually import it and render it into an element. Once we paste it over, we are currently rendering it from that code. Let's jump over. This is what the code currently looks like. This is not bad considering this only took 20 seconds, 30 seconds of our time. As you can see, we got a nice little hover element here. Let's go ahead and keep improving it. Also, what I want to point out here, which is pretty cool, if I hit inspect, we can go into developer mode here in Chrome. It's pretty cool that it already is a little bit mobile and tablet responsive in the sense of it's not keeping these in a row. It actually goes to a column for responsiveness. This also shows the reasoning of why we provide a placeholder image right here, here, and here, so that when we want to put the real images, it's a very simple, just like input output within the code itself. Like looking at the carousel JS here, I could just simply just like add three more files here of the actual correct images. One thing I wanna point out though, is that when you do this method, because of the fact that we're referencing the screenshot so heavily, the actual copy that it will use in the code is going to basically be exactly what was found in the screenshot. So you can see this copy has to do with Stripe, such as build Stripe certified experts, work with Stripe, consulting partner that can integrate and deploy Stripe solutions for you. But in front of development, all we really care about here is our ability just to change that, right? So we could just be like, no, 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 no. Not Stripe experts. I like coffee. And then we already have the UI structured. Where it's good to go. From here, you have two major routes. The first route is that you provide the code that was just generated. You attach the exact same screenshot from Stripe's UI and you identify a very specific part of that screenshot you want replicated. So let me show you that route. So first step here is we're gonna copy all the code in our JS file for carousel. I'm gonna paste all the JS, come over to the CSS. I'm gonna paste all the CSS. I'm gonna reattach the Stripe UI. And from this UI, there might be a couple things that is missing from what we wanted. So the first one could be the idea of highlighting certain text in a certain color. And what we see here of Stripe with this purple hue. The next one being the top code being left aligned. So let's do both. So here's what we got. Looking at this image again, we want to make sure some words in a green hue, like it is in a purple hue there. Obviously, we don't have to speak perfect English here. ChatGPT can, you know, understand that. Also, for this part, and usually when there are specific UI elements found within a design that I want changed, I'll provide that exact code. So because here I want this text to be left aligned, I'm providing that exact code. And I'm simply saying, I want this text to be left aligned. Hit enter. Sometimes you got to reproctor chat GBT and be like, make sure to give me the entire new file. Or alternatively, it would just give you the snippets that change relevant to the file that you just provided. What's nice here is that it remembered that I wanted the entire file. So it's going to be a simple copy and paste. So I got my JS file, I'll copy code. Command A, Control A, paste it over everything. Command save. If you don't save, it's not going to reflect in the emulator. Got my CSS. Let's copy that. Come on over to Carousel CSS. Command V, paste over. There we go. So we got a left aligned text. On top of that, we have little parts here. My head's covering a little bit of it. Being highlighted in a green hue. Not perfect, but what this allows you to do from here is let's say for I like coffee. I want to change that green hue. It has added the logic for us in the code for you to identify highlight green in the CSS class here and be like, yes, and proceed. Now, throughout this entire UI, you can use this like hue-like effort. You understand how to use it because you can reference that CSS class. You see how it's built into the J6 and keep going. What's really cool here is I did all this in probably a minute. I built out the skeleton of a UI element from a specific website within a minute. This is like unheard of. So if you want to really see this strategy played out in multiple ways of approaching the front end, then I got a little gift for you. This right here, I'll leave in the description down below. I'll leave it at the end. Three hours and 11 minutes of me diving into this strategy. But it isn't like a, let me just show you how to make a fake little element and then just say bye-bye. No, I actually show you how I created this website right here at webcafeai.com, a live website link you can go to, play around with, see how it's mobile responsive, tablet responsive, see how the different UI elements interact with each other. This was all done with this coding strategy that I just showed you. The beauty of this is that this all can be done with little to no coding knowledge. Copy and paste, copy and paste, and proceed. Front end coding. Two random videos. That's my face. I'll see you in the next video.